This week we're talking about chemical exfoliants for the body and making your face slimmer with fillers. Hello TLCers, my name is Dr Sarah Tonks, I'm a cosmetic physician. I'm here today to talk to you about how to get your skin smoother because obviously that's very important. Uh, some of us have those little bumps at the top of the arms, uh, keratosis pilaris, also affectionately known as chicken skin. And one of the ways that you can remove that is by using a exfoliant. I personally prefer using a chemical exfoliant rather than a physical one. And I've got two examples here today to show you. One of them is my new favorite, and one of them, sadly, is my old favorite. And they're right here on the desk. Can you guess which one is which? Uh, but let's now go over to, I'm not getting paid to say this. Okay, so I've got here two different brands. One is a very well-known older brand, Jan Marini, and I've got here their Bioglycolic Resurfacing Body Scrub. They also do a hand lotion as well, which is in the same range. And then in the blue corner facing them, we've also got the Perfect Body Lotion. Um, they also do a wash, so they're kind of like, this is a wash and this is a lotion, but each one does a wash and a lotion. Sorry to make that complicated, but this is just what I had at home. So that's why I'm showing them to you like this. And let me tell you, this one, it used to be my favorite all time chemical exfoliant for the body. I thought it was fab. Um, and it still is, it still is fab, but this has really taken over from this one, for me now anyway. Uh, there are some ingredient differences between the two brands. Um, let me just lay that down for you. So first of all, the Perfect Body Lotion and the Perfect Body Wash, which is their wash version, it contains a glutathione, um, which is a very powerful antioxidant. You can't really go wrong by having more antioxidants put in your skincare. Um, it, both of them have got glycolic acid in, um, which is great. Um, that's a chemical exfoliant. It helps to basically free up the bonds between the superficial skin cells and it allows them to exfoliate more easily. So thumbs up there. Um, the Perfect Body Lotion has also got some retinol in it. And I think we all know that retinol is a good thing to have to put on your skin. Whereas the Jan Marini one doesn't contain that, unfortunately. Um, and they're mainly the two reasons why um, it was knocked off its top spot with me because of the glutathione and the retinol. But there's more. So the Perfect um, Body Lotion and the Perfect Body Wash also contain azelaic acid as well, which is really good if you have um, any pigmentation issues. You know, like if you get um, a brown spot on the skin because of sun damage or sun exposure, azelaic acid is really good to help you to lighten that. So it's really, I think, a bit more of a complete package. And the new contender is definitely winning for me at the moment. Just one more thing I forgot to mention, the body wash version of this also has niacinamide in it as well. Sometimes I get a patient in the clinic and they don't know exactly what it is that they want and I don't know what it is that they want or what it is that I need to give them but we both know that somehow they need to walk out of there looking better than the, when they came in. So. In that kind of situation, what do I do? I get these out and I do a little bit of measuring on the face because symmetry or asymmetry, which is lack of symmetry, is super, super important for how people perceive the way that you look. If your face is a little bit asymmetrical and your body as well for that matter, it kind of makes the eye not like it so much. So when people are more symmetrical, we perceive them as being more attractive, more beautiful. So when a patient comes in and they don't really have a big idea about what it is that they want to do, one of the things that I'll do is to try and bring them back to 
uh, this idea of symmetry, which is what I'm going to show you right now. So we can see here that the left cheek is pretty asymmetrical in comparison with the right cheek. It's much flatter. So we're just popping some filler right here. And it's weird because you would think that by adding filler, it's going to make your face look fatter and rounder. But as you'll see in the before and afters in this patient, it actually makes her look slimmer and it rebalances her face and her jawline. So we're adding the filler here in the front part of the cheek. And right about now, I'm swinging this round to place it underneath the nose as well to give a bit more projection there. I know that sounds completely mad, but it does work. And what I'm trying to do here is to make the width of her face where the cheekbones are to be wider than it would be where the jawline is. Let's just take a look at that. So just to illustrate that point, what I'm trying to do here is to make this bit wider in comparison with this bit here. So that would be this measurement here in comparison with this measurement right here and you can see that afterwards there is a difference in the two I mean it's subtle but you know we're working with millimeters here um, and this this changing this angle here on each side that is what makes her look slimmer. While she's not actually lost any weight in the before and afters, all we've done is just add filler in certain spaces to give the illusion that there has been weight loss. Now we're gonna do the chin crease. Again, this is to add volume uh, in the chin where we've lost volume with aging. And if, again, you look at the before and afters right here, I'm gonna show you that the the tension, the muscle tension in the chin looks very slightly different from before we've started the procedure to after. Can you see that it just looks a little bit smoother in the afters? Now, let's check out the forehead asymmetry. You can see that particularly on her left, that's her anatomical left, your right, that the forehead is a little bit flatter there than it is on the other side. It doesn't have enough of a curve to it. And this can be quite an aging feature. So what we're gonna do right now is add filler in that area, which will help to smooth the whole thing off. The forehead, I think, is a really undertreated area, especially in Caucasian people. It's very popular in the Far East. They really prize a smooth, rounded forehead. But particularly in the UK, it's not really something that we tend to do much with. Uh, however, I think if you're going to go for a full face look, you really do have to be looking at all aspects of the face. I do sometimes use a needle to do this procedure, but in this particular patient, I'm using a cannula because I want to reach a wider area of the forehead with just one entry point. So if I did the same thing with a needle, I'd have to go in multiple times. Okay, so let's have a look at the patient afterwards. As you can see, there isn't really much evidence that we've carried out these procedures today. She could pretty much go straight out for dinner immediately after. And that's really something that some people worry about. Am I going to be horrifically swollen or something afterwards? And no is usually the answer. I think this is a really interesting example of how when you do multiple procedures, but very, very small tweaks, it can give you a really global softness to the face. Um, I have an issue when people just treat one or two areas. I think it can leave um, quite a jarring look afterwards. You know, like you'll have a really smooth forehead, but then the rest of the face looks like a saggy old bag or vice versa. But with something like this, because we've treated the forehead, the chin and the cheek, it really pulls the whole look together. So, just to recap, we added some volume here and a little on this side as well to help with the roundness of the forehead. It needs to be a little bit more rounder. Uh, we also added some volume right here and right here as well underneath the nose. And that has the effect of lifting this nose to mouth line slightly. We also added some filler across this chin crease here 
and if you look there's a bit more softness to the smile uh, post-treatment. Almost the lip even looks a little bit better and that's because when you fill everything out it does change how the rest of the face moves. Okay TLCers that's all we've got time for this week. Join me again next week for another guess what we did. That's right, we've got two in a row for you, a double whammy, and here are the pictures right now. So here's a patient with some before and afters. Please comment in the section below. Let me know what it is that you think we've done, and I will reveal all for you next week. In the meantime, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.